this is the Making Noise podcast. Do you have any sort of, um, uh, I guess, like method or or process to tease out creative ideas when you're feeling stuck? Hmm. Well, I mean, one of my processes is just to have like time tomorrow to come back and <laughs> try again. <laughs> you know, that's one. That's one thing. It's really different for me. The stage of composing where there's idea generation from nothing versus once there's some components and we're connecting or editing, those are two different processes. So from nothing, that's where you get inspiration, maybe in a bunch of cool stuff flows, or you can have, I can have days where nothing that I write is good or it's very painful and slow. So the, the process for me for teasing that out is to just have time set aside so that it doesn't feel urgent you know, in the completely blank page moments, time crunch does not induce creativity for me. So yeah, and my one other strategy I use in those moments is we'll write 10 ideas down and it's okay if they all suck, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes the sucky ideas have to get out, you know, and then just kind of clear. That's one thing. And then, yeah, come back tomorrow is another thing and sort of trusting and my own cycle of like energy and exhaustion is really important to pay attention to, too. There are days when maybe I have a two hour block I could use to start a piece or start a new section. But if I'm really worn out, if I've already used up a bunch of mental energy and sort of higher level like brain energy and I'm just tapped out, it won't. It's not a good day to do that. Mm. you know, later on in the process, then it's a little different. If it's connecting things or if it's editing things or if it's coming up with a better version of something, then it's a lot more for me, like, like writing an uh, essay or something where you might brainstorm 10 different variations and eventually find the one you like best, you know, or it might help to zoom out and sort of sing through or play through the piece and sort of get a sense of the flow and go, that's the part that's crunchy that I don't like, or that's the part that seems too long, or that's the part that doesn't feel complete. Where you sort of weed through and experience and imagine what it's going to be like for the audience to encounter it for the first time, sort of zooming out. Yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, I find this is more new for me. When I was younger, it was very hard for me to write long pieces. Mm -hmm. Lately, the last three or four years, I found that one idea, I have way more tools to exploit that idea and get a lot of mileage out of it. And so another thing that I find is often the case is that when I'm sitting there feeling like I need to write something new and what goes here or what connects this, it's actually a lot of times something's already exists that I can use, you know? Um, and so just kind of mining what's already there, my toolkit for that is so much deeper now mm. than it used to be, or it comes easier or I see things more clearly. So those are some of the things that I do. There's so much, so much really good stuff in there. I particularly like what you said about time as a creative, as a source of creativity. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've heard anyone explain it like that. And that, but that Ooh. is such a, uh, it makes so much sense. Um, I know, I know there are people who, who like thrive under deadlines, mm -hmm. but, um, I, I'm, I know I'm not like that though. I'm like, I'm like you where I need to have that space. Yeah. <laughs> I need to have that time, that, that space where I can, I can kind of, uh sift through it and try things out and and research mm -hmm. you know yeah um, research totally oh my gosh i mean for me like i often feel like there's this pre-writing incubation period where like the some of the parameters for the piece are set like in length about and performing forces and maybe some information about what the performers love or if there's a need for the piece like we need a closer we want it to be up tempo or whatever those are we're like 
if I went, cool, all that information on Monday, go write the piece Tuesday, it's like too soon. Mm -hmm. It really like kind of needs to be, it works best. It, I, I'll get the best out of myself if it's sort of incubating and I'm like listening to their recordings from the ensemble and I'm looking up weird techniques for the oboe and hearing what does that sound like? What is that? How's that notated? Yeah. You know, and then it's like, the egg timer comes off, goes off, you know, or the, I mean, vegan, the tofu timer goes off or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now we have like enough stuff to write something cool. Yeah. Oh my God. I think we're, we're so similar with like that's our so, that's process so cool. and like, Yay. I, I'm the same way where, um, I, I think I spend a little bit too much time in the research stage, honestly, but I don't sure. know if that's a procrastination technique or, uh, um, or just my mode, my modest sure. operandi, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like letting all these things sort of fester, you know, and, 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 uh, and teasing out the little aspects of like, well, what about this fingering or mm -hmm. like, or like, well, this note sounds really cool. What if this note's on top, you know, like, I don't know, just experimenting, I guess, but, um, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's really interesting that, that, uh, uh, you have a, we have a very similar approach like that. Um, I love that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I love deadlines um, in terms of just as a busy, excuse me, as a busy person, mm -hmm. it is difficult to get around to the thing that has no deadline, you know, but when it's the raw generation of ideas, you know, that, that may take a little time. Mm -hmm.